the the sheik is obviously uh really really famous because of the time and place uh for me especially like because that's right around the time where i started watching and his life is so fascinating and you have like you know you've said this in the past oh you know dynamite kid his life should be a movie you know this other like easily she, she, she could, could she be could a movie. yeah because of the the stuff that Every, happened early in his career and then him coming over to the u.s and and like yeah, this, all that stuff is really interesting the stuff the stuff in in iran with the with the wrestling and and his talk tea and all that yeah that was that was interesting and then it's like there's two different people. There's the one before he went to Portland and was the Iron Sheik. There was Ali Vaziri, this clean cut guy who then morphed into the Iron Sheik, who was anything but a clean cut guy, you know, physical, you know, um, I mean, super hard trainer and everything like that. And, uh, you know, just the stories of him breaking in and in AWA and everything. And then uh, just getting the name and, and going places. And then the hostage crisis, which really made his career in a lot of ways. I mean, he was a, he was a really good wrestler before that. Um, very impressive. But and really, you know, when he was the most famous, he was he was past his prime by that point. Yeah. And you know, had all the drug issues by that point. So the, the Iron Sheik that everybody saw was was nowhere near the competitor of the Iron Sheik, you know, the Portland Iron Sheik or the um, Mid-Atlantic Iron Sheik. Um, the first WWF run Iron Sheik, you know, where he was. He was a really good wrestler, the master of the suplex and all that stuff. Yeah. As far as him being an amateur wrestler, would he have been good enough to make the 72 team? It would not have been a lock. You know, Greco, you know, U US wasn't that good at Greco Roman, um, but he, he absolutely would have been a, a strong contender to make the team if he was a, a naturalized citizen by then. Yeah. Yeah. By 76, I think he would have been. 34, uh, which would have been pushing it, if that's even his real age. You know, I mean, because as we mentioned, as I mentioned in the article, you know, nope, you know, nobody really knows when the Sheik was born. And um, the Sheik thinks it was in, in September. Um, his passport says March. Um, he says the year's 42. Other times he said other years when he was younger, it was different years, you know. So it's like the Sheik's a man of um, mystery in a lot of ways, in, as far as a lot of his stuff. And, and then as he got older, you know, he became a wrestler. So, you know, then those stories become even more far-fetched. Mm -hmm. Some of those stories that I found uh, really funny and, and fascinating, the uh, Vern Gagne shoot dropkick story. Yeah. That, was... that that actually, if you remember, did you ever see the movie The Wrestler, the Vern Gagne version? I've, I've definitely seen it before. Okay. Well, I mean, the scene at the end of the movie was where he goes like, you know, Billy Robinson goes, nobody can with a drop kick. That was actually taken from the training camp where the Sheik just goes, you know, he can never hit me with a drop kick, you know, and, and Vern, Vern drop kicked him, you know, when he wasn't ready for it. I mean, he set him up for it, but you know, so it's like, yeah, that's actually the, the climactic scene of the movie, the wrestler, the uh, movie, the wrestler which is a, a fascinating movie. If you're a wrestling fan to watch, um, I would not, I would never call it a good movie, <laughs> but, um, you know, it's, it's, um, it's, it's the Vern Gagne version of what, you know, he wanted the public to believe pro wrestling was in, in 1973, 1974, when it came out filmed in 72. Yeah. Uh, the, the John Nord story. Yeah. Oh my God. Yeah. Yeah. That's like evil. Like the, doing something like that, you know, if you're carrying something and giving it to somebody else to take the fall is really evil. Yeah. Well, there's a lot of craziness in the eighties WWF, you know, in early nineties WWF. Yeah. So I, you know, I think I, I understood this, but maybe didn't even realize it, but when Sheik wins the title from Backland, he hadn't really even been in WWF in the current in his current run for very long before he got the title. But that's, that's how it always was. You know, in, in, in those days, a heel would show up on TV and they'd be on TV for two months or so. And then they would debut. And when they would debut, it would be at the Spectrum in the Garden in the main event. So, I mean, they're, you know, um, usually they were not around for a long period of time. You know, I mean, again, you know, the only guys who, who won the titles were Stasiak, who'd been around. He'd been around for a little while. Koloff, who'd been around a little while. And Sheik, who'd been around a little while. But it wasn't like 
you know, you're in the territory for three years or anything like that, because none of the heels were. You had, you know, your main event heels revolved. You know, they would come in and do their six months to nine months in the territory, sometimes a year. And the managers would then bring in new heels and then they would go and leave. And Vince's Vince's father's idea was, you know, every depending on who the guy was, but kind of like every five years, we'd bring them back for another run if if they're famous. And some guys that Vince liked more, maybe like George Steele, he would, he would bring back a little bit more often because George Steele could only work the summer anyway, full time. So, um, yeah, that's that's not a, a surprise. And I mean, you know, Sheik's run, I mean, it was kind of the right place at the right time. It, it's like, I think a lot of people think that, that Sheik was picked um, as this great plan because of, um, you know, Hulk Hogan being an American hero, but Hogan was going to win the title. And there was just like, it could have been anyone in that spot. You know what I mean? Like Stasiak, there's, you know, what was the reason for Stasiak? There was no reason. He just was there at the time and they wanted to transition from Morales to San Martino. And the same thing here, they wanted to transition from Backland to Hogan and, and Sheik made a good foil. I mean, in the sense of, um, you know, it, it, but but Hogan was going to do that patriotic thing anyway. Um, but Sheik was a great foil for Slaughter. You know, I mean, it was the biggest thing that really the biggest thing Slaughter ever did was the program with Sheik. Uh, how much influence does Backlund have in that decision? If if Vince McMahon was like, nope, we want Hogan to beat Bill Eady, would Hulk Hogan have beat Bill Eady? Probably. Um but but they, as far as like getting it off Bob, they knew that Bob respected the Sheik because of his amateur background, so it was an easier sell. But I don't know that if in that same situation where you know Bill Eady had a lot of respect too, even though he was not a great amateur wrestler or anything. But and it may have been a tougher sell on Bob. But at the end of the day, I don't see Bob you know being told you know it's your time to lose lose to Bill Eady, and and I don't see Bob having an issue you know I mean a, a big enough issue to refuse. Um, you know, I don't think Bob would refuse Vince Sr. You know, and again, at that point, everybody just thought Vince Sr. was in control, even though Vince Jr. had actually bought the company a few years earlier. That was actually a secret in wrestling. People didn't know that until, like, um, beginning of 84, you know, when they realized, hey, wait a minute, you know, Vince Jr. owns the company, not Vince Sr. You can also find me at Vincent Verhey on Cameo. Oh, my God. I will send you a happy birthday wish. I will send you a happy anniversary wish. Granny, you ever thought about being on Cameo? What is it? My computer, my front page is uh, Microsoft. And I go through there and see all kinds of lies and stuff like that. And here you are. You're doing a commercial. And then you had me on there when I was ranting about WrestleMania. Did you get my permission? Oh, okay. Wait, what? Just, what? Just stop You're... for a second. Your front page is Microsoft. I guess. Yeah. I don't even know what that means. Your front page is Microsoft. What do you mean you go through there and see all the lies? What does that mean? Well, they have a whole bunch of stuff, you know, about this and that and this and that, you know, all kinds like of news. Like the news? News? I don't post the videos. I don't edit the videos. If you saw some video or some commercial, I have no idea what it is or where it came from or who edited it together. I'm sure it was someone from the site. It's not no, Tony it's not and it's not Dave and it's not me. And it's not Vinny, he's busy doing cameos. That's right. If you enjoy these videos, for just $7.99 per month, you can enjoy full-length editions of The Brian and Vinny Show, Wrestling Observer Live, Figure Four Daily with Tom Lawler and Lance Storm, The Mad Men Podcast, Speak Now Pro Wrestling with Denise Salcedo and more, plus hundreds of archived shows, all in beautiful HD. Don't miss out. Join us today.